This patient has a pouting left inferior punctum with chronic discharge and patent syringing, consistent with canaliculitis. A bacterial swab is taken to check for atypical causes of canaliculitis. A longitudinal cut is then made along the length of the inferior canaliculus to expose the epithelial lining. As the canaliculus is assessed, sulfur granules clearly come into view. These are also known as dacryoliths, canaliculus, canalicular casts, as well as concretions. The canaliculus are removed with fine tooth forceps. Alternatively, the material can be gently curated out. Great care is taken not to damage the epithelial lining of the canaliculus. Meticulous removal of all tissue is required to remove the reservoir for bacterial growth. The canaliculus is often grossly enlarged and almost cavernous with much more material than meets the eye. Here we use a curette to try to ensure complete evacuation of all material from the inferior canaliculus. Alternative canaliculotomy techniques have been described, including the use of the Kelly punch to excise the roof of the canaliculus, as well as punctum sparing canaliculotomy. Additionally, the granules can be removed without incision, although incomplete clearance and recurrence risk is probably higher. Here, syringing confirms patency. Actinomyces, which is the commonest associated infection, is generally sensitive to chloramphenicol, so the inclusion of this or another suitable antibiotic may be of benefit. Dacryo endoscopy is increasingly widely used for the diagnosis and treatment of lacrimal drainage disorders. Here it provides clear views into the canaliculus of a patient with actinomyces canaliculitis and allows confirmation that all the material has been removed. Primary canaliculitis is classically secondary to actinomyces, though other bacteria are increasingly being recognised in the pathogenesis of canaliculitis, with fungal and viral pathogens also associated with this condition. Secondary canaliculitis is found usually secondary to punctal plugs. The reports of canaliculitis following traumatic syringing and probing procedures also exist. The management of canaliculitis can broadly be split into conservative and surgical approaches. Though overall, surgical approaches tend to have a higher cure rate.